a culture, something that's authentic. It's something you live every day. It's not something you do. It's yeah. not a, it's not a team building event. A, one team building event could be a part of building a strong culture, yeah. but it's gotta be a team building event. That's relevant that, you know, has, has, has been planned out It involves the team deciding what, so there's a lot of different factors, but you know, to build true culture, you really got to get down into the nitty grit. I mean, you got to be willing to take personal risk. You got to be willing to lay it on the line. You got to be willing to spend personal time with your team. I'm talking field phone calls at 2 a.m., maybe to a crying individual on the other end of the phone, right? I mean, that happens. We're talking about loaning personal money out of your pocket to your employees because you trust them. You know that it's the right thing to do and mm-hmm. you know they're going to pay you back. And will you get burned by doing that every now and then? Absolutely. Will you do it again? Over and over again, every single time, right? That's how you build culture. Welcome to me, Casa. Make yourself at home. Do your do. Welcome to my pad. This show lab. Go create your move. This episode is brought to you by Subway. What's good, everybody? It's 99 Miles Per Hour Podcast with me, your host, Percy Garner, and uh, we are starting season two, and we brought back, uh, you know, a special guest who appeared in season one, one of the earlier earlier episodes, and, uh, you know, I'm going to ask him in here in a little bit what the, the studio looks like since he's been here, because we were recording with iPhones back then, and the lighting was terrible, and it just looked like we were in a jail cell recording a podcast, so hopefully he's impressed now, but uh, before we get to our guest, I want to talk about, uh, you know, the limited time merch. We put some out for the guys. I know it was just a crop top for the women, but uh, we put some out for the guys, so go purchase that. That goes to a Dover student scholarship, so help us out there, and uh, yeah, we have a sponsor, uh, you know, Subway. You guys know what Subway is? You know what Subway is, Josh? Okay. Subway, uh, I've been trying to lose some weight, so I've been going to their protein bowls. But if you guys haven't had any of their melts, let's just say, you know, you guys are missing out. I grew up on Subway. We're about to ask the guest if he's had Subway ever, probably. But uh, the Fitzgerald family and what they do for the community means a lot. And thank you for making this podcast possible. So thank you, Subway. And uh, I don't think I ever took a poll on what's the best Subway athlete. We got me, Steph Curry, Tom Brady, even though he doesn't eat bread. Uh, Marshawn Lynch. So we're going to have to, uh, we're gonna have to take a poll, see what you guys like better. But anyways, without further ado, let's get to, uh, the returning guest. I think the first returning guest, maybe. Yes. Yeah. First returning guest. Three Pete, three Pete, man. Th- oh yeah. We had a part one, part two. Look at you, man. But he's special. And, uh, you know, I like having him in here because I don't have to, uh, you know, direct the whole conversation. You know, Steve's always got some <laughs> Some nice information to share, but guys, this guy we have in the building today, I love doing introductions. It's one of my favorite things. He's the one who introduced me to the business world. I'll say that officially. You know, he he was my boss for a little bit and he's still my mentor. I consider him my mentor. I don't get to spend much time with him, you know, because he's off doing big things, which we'll get to in a second. But, uh, you know, we're also going to talk about something he did this, uh, this weekend it was pretty special too. We'll get into that as well. But ladies and gentlemen, Steve Van Horn. How, how is it? How is it being back in this? Look at this place, man. All these lights shining in your face. This is it. This is awesome, man. <laughs> this is a little different than the last time I was in. We were like holding cameras, propping them up on books. <laughs> we, had, we had like, uh, you know, adapters that weren't made to do things, yes. doing things. And so this is awesome, man. I'm super proud of you. Super proud of you and Josh and what you guys are doing over here. I think it's absolutely awesome. The, the mood lighting, you know, throwing me a little bit. <laughs> I did cue a little Marvin Gaye music a little go, but uh, say. yeah, you're killing it, man. Oh, man. Super proud of you. I love listening to your episodes. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah. And you're, you know, you're one of the early listeners too. So, I mean, we appreciate everything you've done to helping us. And, uh, you know, the thing, I guess I want to get right into it. I was going to, you know, kind of talk about some things, but you know, <laughs> I wanted to get into this weekend. I wasn't able to, you know, come, you know, I don't want to talk about why I can't come, but <laughs> well, I wasn't able to make it. But, you know, you guys had Jordan, Jordan Miller news there at the Toys for Tots because, oh, yeah, you know, it's a it's a local you know thing that's big for this community. And, you know, unfortunately, there was all the Toys for Tots got burned down in the building. So it was it was a critical time. And, and you guys stepped up. And I mean, who, who did you guys partner with? Because it wasn't just you guys, right? No, it was it was a, a labor of love from the entire community. And uh uh, yeah, when you say we stepped up, we, I mean, it wasn't us. It was the community. It was literally the entire 
community. Yeah. Just an absolute outpouring. Um, the fire, the unfortunate fire that happened that burned down, burned up the first $8,000 worth of toys that had already been collected and taken back to the distribution center. Um, lit of no pun intended, lit a fire under this community that people just started pouring out monetary donations, pledges of toys, and it just spiraled from there. And then we became more involved because we realized that uh, our ability to raise monetary donations and toy donations far exceeded the ability of the local Toys for Tots um, to the resources to yeah. be able to support it. So we we stepped in myself, um, Chad. Uh, Simpson, obviously, yep. Nick McMillan and Kyle Quill and kind of said, hey, oh, let us help take the lead. You know, we, we, we're used to logistics and working with this kind of money and this kind of buying power. So let us help. And, and they were very gracious. Bob Stratton and his team, they've had a lot of volunteers and trying to trying to show us the toys for tots way and uh, helping us with what to expect. But we volunteered our facilities and a lot of our volunteers and just really tried to rally those community contacts and resources we have to make this the most unbelievable event. And I believe it's going to be one of the largest toy distributions in the state of Ohio history. Dang. If, if I, am I correct by saying you guys raised $80,000? Uh, more. more. Oh, more. wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So si significantly more than that, we were able to uh, match that, you know, part of the, part of the monetary donations for a lot of other generous partners. And then uh, Simpson Heating and Air stepped up to match a lot of the toy donations. So we leveraged buying power to even maximize that by working with some local big box retailers. Uh, tractor Supply was fantastic, shipping things up from Tennessee, their central warehouse down there, and giving us incredible pricing on it to Dang. absolutely make every penny go as far as possible. Same thing with Walmart. This Walmart in New Philly, I know they catch a lot of flack. Yeah. I mean, I've heard the stories and you see all the memes online, but I'll tell you, you will not hear me say anything negative about Walmart after my experience with these guys. We had some people step up, Mr. London down there, who's the assistant store manager. What they did as far as palleting, pricing, logistics, it's just unbelievable i mean phenomenal and they were they were thrilled to do it every step of the way i even felt bad i kept apologizing <laughs> and uh, he's like don't, don't apologize we love being involved i'm like it's christmas you guys are jam-packed i yeah. know you got a million things to do and here you are helping me and he's like yeah but i'm all about this this is what i love to do so thank you mr london thank you walmart tractor supply all the generous donors it's just been incredible have you been to the warehouse yet i have not you got to stop over. Maybe okay. you roll over there tomorrow. We'll meet up over there. You got to right. see it. Now, by the time this airs, this will be, you know, a week behind us, the distributions this weekend. But yeah. um, I'm excited for this weekend, man. There's going to be a lot of really uh, excited kids this Christmas that are going to get gifts that probably exceed the quality that most people would expect to get through, uh, you know, a Toys for Tots program yeah. generally. I mean, we're talking some items that are several hundred dollars. We had uh, Chromebooks. We have Chromebooks. Dang. Yeah, unbelievable. We partnered with um, uh, Samsung and Walmart to get these Chromebooks at just an incredible price um, that we're going to be able to distribute to some families. Um, we have video gaming chairs. We have electronics out the wazoo, Bluetooth speakers. And, we, and we're not talking three or four. We're talking pallets, Dang. pallets of gaming chairs. We have pallets of hoverboards, you know, that are normally wow. 200 bucks a pop. So I think we have, you know, 60, 70 hoverboards. I mean, just... It's incredible, man. Every time Chad walks in, he, he starts crying. He's really? trying to do a big old cry baby this week. <laughs> Um, I feel like, you know, I, I know, I know <laughs> it is an emotional thing, man. If you, uh, there, there's actually, uh, I think I'm allowed to plug it, right? You guys don't have any nonprofit affiliation. I know you personally no, yeah, do. It's all good. I can it's plug. All good. So if you go to toys for tots, Ohio, and there's only one video on their Facebook page, go to Facebook toys for tots, Ohio. Um, there, you go to the video section, you know, at the top there, there's one video and it's Deb. She's a local coordinator. She actually won coordinator of the year for toys for tots on a national level a couple years ago. She's very organized. She's been very helpful with us. Um, but she did a video. She was sponsored by Duracell a couple years ago because of her hey. stories. Went, and it's like a two and a half minute video. Check it out, man. You won't regret the two and a half minutes you spend watching it. If you can watch that video and not get all misty eyed, <laughs> then I question whether or not you have a heart because I'm telling you every time I, I've, I've seen it four or five times now. And the last time I watched it was with Chad for the first time. I said, Hey man, you got to see this. And he's knows and have met Deb and talked to her more many times. Literally he starts watching and like, I look over like two seconds later and his, his lips quivering, his eyes are going all and I'm like, and I'm out. I, I literally grabbed a bottle of water. I walked to the back of the office. I'm like, chuck it. Every time I turn around, my eyes start watering. I'm like, I can't, can't do it. Like, text in but man I mean, my you know eyes are sweating <laughs> man if you can't be touched with the thought of a kid who maybe you know had to spend a part of the year wondering if they were going to get dinner if they were wondering if they were you know going to get a birthday present uh if there would be a thanksgiving turkey on the table and all of a sudden they're going to get a 400 hundred dollar uh tractor ride on yeah. from tractor supply for christmas you know and, and as quick as people do positive things people want to be negative right yeah you've experienced that your whole life too i'm sure um so 
people reach out like, well, geez, these kids are going to get nicer toys than my kids will get this Christmas. Like, <laughs> come on. I mean, I don't even know what to say to you people. Yeah. First of all, like, <laughs> did your kids spend this Thanksgiving wondering if he would have a hot meal? Did your kids spend this Christmas sleeping on a sleeping bag in the floor? Did he spend, I mean, those are the kind of things that like, Hey, let's let them have that day. Can we let yeah. some of the less fortunate people have that day at least where maybe they get a little bit more than some of us. Yeah. I think that's fair. Don't you guys? And I, <laughs> and that like personally i can't remember exactly i just know it was either share christmas or toys for tots you know i was actually a part of that growing up so i had toys delivered to me and you know i had been told about you know because i actually met one of the the pastors that was you know delivering toys and i was like he's like yeah i remember you and i was like really and he's like yeah i deliver toys you know for you on christmas i was like oh that was you know obviously i don't remember i just remember the toys like come on mm-hmm. now you know so it's it's definitely magical and 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 the kids obviously deserve it they're not they're not brought into this world knowing about oh. you know they're not made to work and and provide for themselves so it's a it's definitely a magical thing and i'm glad you know that's a great yeah. point, man. Cause a lot of people take it back to the parent. Well, they don't deserve it. They should work hard. They like, come on, man. If you've never been in that moment where something's caught you off guard, or you've been prepared financially, then God bless you. You're better off than me and 98% of the rest of America, you know? So I would just tell you, um, you know, for those people, it's not sometimes about poor financial planning. It's not about, um, them, them not budgeting correctly or them yeah. being lazy. Sometimes it's about life said them really, really hard right in the dang mouth, yep. you know, and they're fighting to get back up and they just need a little bit of help. But no matter what the parents going through, that's not the kid's problem. Exactly. I don't even care if you are someone that abuses the entitlement programs. The kids shouldn't suffer for that. No seven year old should wake up on Christmas morning with the spirit of Christmas in his heart, run downstairs, look under that Christmas tree and find, you know, a, a box of macaroni. I mean, that's not fair. It's yeah. not right. And when there's so much, abundance in our world if we can do something to help with that then then we're going to help and i think that's the spirit of you know a lot of stuff we're going to talk about later why yeah. chad and i are, are, are great alignment why i thought it was a great decision to you know align with him a business and become a good business partner and employee employee of his and uh we we see eye to eye on that you know we want to help other people it's not about just building stronger steve and stronger chad we want to build a stronger community we want to build a stronger company and we want to bring everybody with us along the way and this is you know i think a pretty good little sample of what we're capable of when we put our minds into something yeah and just being a part of this community like you said they all come together and they're pretty amazing so incredible i got to experience firsthand with the rainbow connection but you know yeah you get to experience the generosity (laughs) of the community every dang day (laughs) and i bet a lot of the people that you probably have the benefit of talking to every day um are the same people that reached out to us actually i know for a fact that's the case so just givers we we live in a community of a lot of givers so there are some takers but we're never going to punish the ones that you know need because of those few people i've always said of you know, food, food distribution is one that's always brought up frequently, you know, well, there's food stamps and there's, you know, WIC cards and there's uh, local food pantries, you know, what, why do we have to have all those? But I've always said, if you got to feed nine kids that don't need it to get to the one kid that does, I'm cool with that. Exactly. I'm down with that. (laughs) I'll, I'll I'll kick that in there. I'll give you 10 bucks. If that $1 is going to make the difference every day of the week. I like that. I never heard it put like that. I like that though. Anyways, I'm I'm glad that we can talk about that and and I'm glad that it was covered and people are aware that this is going on. Maybe people didn't even know that that was an opportunity for them. So I'm glad, you know, there was some some new co- news coverage and you know the word got out that hey, because there was people out there and just the, from the videos I saw, I was like that was that was awesome. Oh, that was awesome. incredible! Such and, a good day. And I wanted to talk about one little quick thing. You know, our Dover. Uh, tradition that we do on uh, Thanksgiving and yeah and talk about how you guys needed me out there because you guys lost by a bucket I mean come on <laughs> so so Dover we do this uh, uh, Thanksgiving morning this Dover alumni basketball game and we have the old man court and the and the young man court and uh, I, I've made it over there to join Steve in the old man court and uh, <laughs> it's a it's a it's like a changing of the guard you yeah know? and it's weird saying you know old men because you're not even you're not even forty yet so <laughs> no Percy I'm not even close to 40 Jeez. Well, I just turned 33 the 13th so you know same day as Jamie Foxx Taylor Swift you know all the cool people I'm the coolest out of that group anyways but it's been you know years where I'm hoping I don't get hurt <laughs> but that's always the goal man but we all gotta go to work uh, exactly. a couple days later so <laughs> exactly but no I just want to make sure people are aware of that and just kind of you know the traditions that Dover has and, uh, you know, obviously it's basketball season now <laughs> and I'm a Oriole night and I got, yeah. you know, TC Mulk. I'm, uh, I'm uh, excited to announce that now. And I got Mikey Beal, Mikey Beal. Hey, let's get it. You know, shout out to Dover basketball. And, you know, uh, we got a big game coming up this Friday. Yeah, we do. Don't know if the, I don't think Josh can make that happen where the video gets out in five seconds. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopefully Dover won. <laughs> 
<laughs> so by this time, when, when this airs, we're going to be talking about that awesome Dover victory. Right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Nice exactly. win, boys. Way exactly. to win one for the Gipper. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, man. And if not, then, hey, on to the next one, fellas. You know what? It's a good game. Way to play hard. We'll get them next time. Exactly. Because uh, <laughs> the next Dover Philly game is when I get to present the game ball. Uh, as a Royal Knight, so I get the, the Who big game. did you game. smooze to I get the Dover Philly game? You smoother. I didn't do anything. But hey, I got the 8 a.m. basketball games on Saturday morning, so I should be all right. Yeah. But, <laughs> 3 a.m. gaming. <laughs> till 3 a.m. on this gaming I have benches. no idea what you're talking about. I don't even game at all. No, I'm joking. But yeah, use code PERCY for Epic Game Store on Fortnite. Um, anyways. Uh, <laughs> nice but, plug. But I wanted to, you know, obviously I wanted to have you back on because, you know, obviously your you know line of business is different and what you're doing is different than when we first talked obviously you were my boss and i called you a master of culture and i just loved working at comdoc because of you and obviously the whole comdoc culture was amazing too uh but now you know obviously you're working with chad simpson and the, mm-hmm. the hvac business and you know learning and and building great business with him so i thought it was a good time to have you back on and just and go into how scary the whole thing might have been, <laughs> why you decided uh, to do that a little bit, and, you know, maybe, you know, family and legacy was in in mind when you're doing that. But, you know, let's 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 just talk about actually your business right now, Bonsky, and, and, and I guess Simpson Heating and Cooling, if they go together. Yeah, they do. They go together well, actually, because one's in Stark County and the other one's down here in Tuscarawas County. So uh, no real conflict there. We share well and support each other well. So Man, you're, I mean, you're right. There was a, there was a lot of, uh, sleepless nights there for, for a little bit. Um, for me too, you know, leaving Comdoc doctor, go to rainbows. It was a tough decision. It, yeah. It always, anytime you switch a career and you know, I was there for a long time. I was yeah. there for, you know, what 15? Yeah. Four, almost 14. Yeah. 13 and a half years. I think it was, um, yeah, I, was I had worked two, my way no, from no. <laughs> a territory scrub out there slinging copiers, you yes. know, trying to own the 39 corridor down here in Tuscarawas County. And, um, you know, just, just because of the relationships I was being able to build in Tuscarawas County, I was able to work my way up the ladder pretty quick and expand my territory and my offerings and um, had transitioned all the way to being, you know, a, a vice president of a, of a very large organization. I'll forever be grateful for that. You know, they taught me more um, than I ever would have learned without them. And I wouldn't be where I am today without them. I mean, yeah. that's the reality. So got nothing but nice things to say about uh, Comdoc and Xerox and have a lot of great friends still there. Um, but yeah, it became time. You know, I, I, I'm the type of person I got to be challenged. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Some people can't, some people don't understand why <laughs> I was, I was very comfortable in that job. I could do it with my eyes closed. Yeah. We had kind of done everything there was to be done. I was a 13 out of 13 presidents club award winner. Um, and there, I felt like I kind of climbed the mountain. Like there was, there just wasn't a lot of challenge every day. I, could, I was very confident I could walk in any office and sell them whatever I wanted to sell them mm-hmm. at that point. And that's not I believe coming that. from a point of arrogance. That's just, yeah. I knew the products very well. I took a lot of pride in what I did. I had the ability as a VP to control um, whether I was able to fulfill those commitments. So I felt like this is easy. Like nobody yeah. can compete with me, right? Like you can beat me on price. If you're a price buyer, then cool, go with somebody cheaper, but they're not going to do for you what I can do for you. Mm-hmm. And then I think, you know, just being able to be a good ambassador of their money in the community too, sponsoring everything that we sponsored. I think it was just a great fit. But as some of those things started to change, you know, it just, changed for me. And, um, Chad and I have been good friends for a long time. Um, we align on a lot of the, the similar moral and the ways we feel about things and generosity and wanting to do good things for the community. And, uh, for a while he's wanted to grow his company really quickly. So he started reaching out, you know, it, it became like a, probably a two year ago thing where he was like, what would it take? <laughs> and I was like, it's probably not going to happen. Like, yeah. it's cool to talk about it. You know, it's like, hey, what if I win the lottery? Do you play the lottery? No. <laughs> well, you're probably never going to win. Like, it was kind of like that. Like, uh, you know, maybe, maybe. Um, what would it look like to work together? You know, we'd have fun. It'd be awesome, you know? Yeah. But uh, the conversation never really went much further. But then I think as uh, some things started changing at Xerox and I started thinking like, do I want to do this forever? Like, I'm I'm 30. I just turned 37 a couple weeks ago, Percy. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Um, so I was 30, I think I just turned 36 and I definitely have never been a job hopper. I've only really had, you know, a few jobs in my life that I've done well. I didn't just go in and, you know, have to them and then quit. But, um, I thought like, man, if I'm going to make a decision to move a career, then I I definitely want to do it sooner than later. I don't Mm -hmm. want to be the guy that, you know, is just bouncing for the rest of my life. So um, I had quite a few opportunities, but none of them really appealed to me. I thought, well, I have a great job doing what I love to do and loving the people I work with. 
and I make really good, you know, money. I'm very blessed in that regard. So I'm not going to just go do that somewhere else. Yeah. I'm not going to go be an employee or a VP somewhere else and work for the man and have really good people and build a great culture. And we'll talk about culture in a second. Cause you're right. That's extremely important to me. Um, it's gotta be something unique. And, and that was where the conversation kind of started to evolve. And I think as Chad's need grew and his hunger to grow that business really started to, to grow. Um, and my need to maybe scratch an itch that I was starting to get grew, <laughs> the conversation kind of evolved into more serious conversation that, you nice. know, that probably around the, the end of last year, actually it was right around Q3, um, turned into a, a very serious conversation that, uh, was like, uh, are we actually going to do this? And, uh, you know, that involved ownership. Like, I don't want to just come be an employee. Well, Hey, why don't we buy some HVAC companies and, and grow, you know, a little empire, um, around Northeast Ohio together. And, uh, that, that appealed to me a lot, you know, yeah. thinking about legacy and this is a different topic. And man, me and you do this. Like we have a list of 20 topics. We're going to get through four of them, <laughs> you know, cause I'm going to give you Steve's philosophies on life. I'm not a real opinionated person when it comes to yeah. most things. I'll never tell you who to vote for, whether to get the vaccine. I could care less. That's you. You make your decision based on what knowledge you have at you know, mm -hmm. your disposal and information. But I do have theories about things that I'll tell you uh, when it comes to certain things. And you know, you ask people like their why that's the thing right now. You know, I think like Simon Sinek wrote the book, start with why. And everybody started kind of quite like, what's your why Percy? So I'm going to ask you right now, ask you and Josh, like, what's your why? And I already know what the answer is going to be, but what's your why? Uh, you know, I just really want to have a lot of money. No, I'm just <laughs> nobody's ever going to say that. That's for the record. That is the answer. That yeah, is the yeah, correct yeah, answer for yeah, a lot of people, yeah. but well, they won't say it. I said it in a joking way, you know, but it's, do you want yeah. me to say it for you? Yeah. And you're going to say, you're probably right. Yeah. But you can go ahead and say it. You want to say it at the same time on three? Ready? Uh -huh. One, two, two three. three. Family. <laughs> Boom. We we definitely uh, plan that. No. <laughs> but family can't be your why. Like yeah. family is not a specific. Like that's like what, what makes the world go round? Love. Like oh, <laughs> like hearts, daisies, rainbows, unicorns. <laughs> we like, gotta clip that part. <laughs> do we? No, no, I'm saying we're keeping that. We're going to oh, put that yeah, just put that it all little, in, man. Just that little get, area we're putting is, that this, on, all right, on so TikTok. So the first two of them were like warm and cozy, Steve. Thanks for everybody. <laughs> this one's going to be authentic, Steve. This yeah. is the stuff we talk about when we have our one-on-ones and meetings, yeah, right, Percy? Like the yeah. real stuff. So this yeah. is, label this one, the real deal, Josh, right? <laughs> Your family is not your why. Like, yeah. what is your why? Like, is your is your why? Like, so if you ask people, like, so so tell me why your family is your why. I'm going to ask you now. Why is your family your why? What what about it? I want to provide for them so they have a better life than I did. You want to provide them with what? Do you want to provide them with generational Resources. wealth? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Generational wealth. Yes. Yeah. Well, then you know what your why is? Generational wealth. Yeah. That's what your why is. Your why is never going to be your family. Just like, you know, what, what is it? My love for people. Like, that's not a why. Yeah. Like, what, what is the why? Is it to get involved with the charity? And then I would ask you, like, what are you doing to grow that why? You know, it can't just be, well, my why is my family. So I'm a, I'm a good husband and a good dad. But okay, let's dig a little deeper. Yeah. Like, what does that mean? Like, are you respectful to your wife? Are you home every night to support her and give her what she needs? Do you work together as a team for your kids? Does that mean you coach them in sports? You, you spend time with them, you, right? Like there's yeah. a lot of different things to that. But when you say your why, number one answer is always my family. But then when you start digging deeper, it's like, what, what is your family? What does that mean? And for most people it is wealth. It's, it yeah. has to do with financial or giving them more than I had as a, that could be your why. Mm -hmm. I want them to have more than I had when I was growing up, I want them to have access to more resources. I want them to understand things that I didn't understand as a kid so that they become better rounded individuals. I want mm -hmm. them to have a job that they enjoy because I, I saw, you know, my parent, my, and I did not see this for the record, but some people would say like, I saw my parent go to a job they hated every day and mm -hmm. they were miserable and they took it out on everybody around. Okay, cool. Well, then that could be your why, but your why is not just your family. I love my family. That's the easy, the easy out. It's, it's, it's like almost like the answer you, you think you have to say, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. It's like going to a job interview, like, tell me one of your weaknesses, Percy. Like, my weakness is I just work too darn hard. You know, like, <laughs> I just love to work. I'll just work myself to death all day. That's my that's my greatest struggle as an employee. So you should definitely hire me because I'm, I'm just going to work, work, work. Like, I've sat there. I've been on that side of the table. And I'm like, is this like a class in college or what? Like, did they teach you to say this really dumb stuff? Like, nobody wants to work 20 hours a day. Yeah. I'm a workaholic. I love yeah, to work. I that do is it. true. But I'm not, I'm, nobody's going to ask me that question. Like, what's your biggest week? I'm going to say, uh, at times, ego is a big issue for me, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, I want to be right. Sometimes yeah. right, becoming right is more important to me than... Similar. Yeah. I mean, so I struggle with that. Um, some people that don't know me real well might say arrogance. Like, you want to have a serious conversation. We'll talk about what, what I have problems with, but 
I can assure you it's not going to be, I like to work too hard. Sometimes I like to show up to work before the doors are unlocked. That's a problem. <laughs> Is your janitor going to be here early enough to let Steve Van Horn in every day? <laughs> like, that's a BS answer. Like, yeah. Just cut the crap. Tell me the truth about it. But those, tip, I think, that's a tip. <laughs> that's, don't, don't say that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I, yeah, I think those are, but you know what? I have a lot of respect when I've done, I mean, I've interviewed hundreds of people, thousands of people probably in my career. And uh, when, when they get real about that, I, I enjoy that. Like they'll say, you know, Hey, what, tell me about something that you struggle with organization. You know, I, I need help with that. That's something that, you know, I'd, I'd enjoy working with other people who maybe do it well. And I'm like, we know people who struggle with that. No. <laughs> yeah, we do. But I, sometimes they, they don't understand that, especially yeah. in a job interview. They don't feel like that vulnerability can be disclosed, but I'd encourage people. Like if you're going in for a job interview, like get real with that employer, they might have resources, a place to help you. I mean, mm -hmm. I would, I would encourage you maybe not to let all the skeletons yeah, out. It's of the like closet. a date. Like, you don't want to just, <laughs> yeah. Like what's your biggest struggle? Well, the last three places I embezzled, you know, and that's can't keep my hands out the cookie jar, you know? <laughs> Probably don't want to go that far, <laughs> but I do think being a little bit vulnerable yeah, and yeah, honest yeah. in a job interview or anything yeah. is, is worthwhile. I and think it, in life, I, and I've said that countless times on the show, you know, I think when, before I even started this podcast, uh, the podcast I appeared on, they were just so taken back by that, that how open and vulnerable I was about mental health. I was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't need to hide anything. No, I, I I'm human. Yeah. You're, you're, you're a pretty straight shooter. What you see is, <laughs> is what you get. And I, I mean, th to me, that's the best way to be, you know? Uh, but, but yeah, that's, th to me, that's, that's a really important thing that I, we, I, I thought we would talk about for a second, yeah. but so that I don't stay down the rabbit hole too long, I'll pop back out <laughs> and, uh, we'll talk about, um, culture. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I that's think that's something yes. we're going to talk about in like the second episode we <clears throat> never got to. Either. Yeah. But <laughs> We didn't I, get to it. No, no I've, I've never found culture to be that. That's like this, like enigma that a lot of companies struggle with. And a lot of teams, like I've never struggled with that. I think it starts with the same thing we were just talking about, you know, a little bit of vulnerability. A, you have to have genuineness to build culture. Yeah. You know, a lot of people try to fake culture. Yeah. I was about to say, it's been one of those buzzwords oh. that, you know, oh yeah, we have a great culture, but like, do, do you really do you yeah <laughs> it's almost like the reverse of yeah. what we just talked about with the employee coming in for an interview telling saying those things you know but when you go into an interview and the boss is like yeah we have you know really good culture here you know obviously you can't you're not going to get the real answer from the boss right no <laughs> no and and there's yeah. like 20 questions i would ask that person that's like oh we have great culture and i've dealt with this even within you know com doc and i won't throw any specific individuals under the bus but they'd be like oh yeah my, my team's just like your team we run just like and you just sit there and look at them like no you don't no <laughs> you my don't team, no <laughs> yeah like uh, a, a culture is something that's authentic it's something you live every day it's not something you do it's yeah. not a it's not a team building event a, one team building event can be a part of building a strong culture yeah. but it's got to be a team building event that's relevant that you know has 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 been planned out it involves the team deciding what so there's a lot of different factors but you know to build true culture you really got to get down into the nitty grit i mean you got to be willing to take personal risk you got to be willing to lay it on the line you got to be willing to spend personal time with your team i'm talking phil phone calls at 2 a.m maybe to a crying individual on the other end of the phone right i mean that happens we're talking about loaning personal money out of your pocket to your employees because you trust them you know that it's the right thing to do and mm -hmm. you know they're going to pay you back and Will you get burned by doing that every now and then? Absolutely. Will you do it again? Over and over again, every single time, right? That's how you build culture. That's how you build trust. By the way, I Steve, uh, I need, no, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, just like it, looking in, like you can't really, it's not something you take a, a visit to ComDoc one day. I mean, I don't want to say it was like when I took, did my interview that one day when I was texting you, I didn't even have your number. I was on Facebook <laughs> Messenger like, hey, Steve, you know anything about this company? But when I came and- Cricket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little inside joke. That's me to see you got a different but, story. Um, when I came to ComDoc, man, it was just, it was, it was you amazing. Feel it. Yeah. Culture is something you feel. I was just like- Oh man, you know, and yeah. Jerry messed it up a little bit. No, I'm just making, it, I'm just messing. It's a huge Jerry. part of the culture. I, I mean, know, it's, Jerry, you got to have a Jerry. It's a cast of characters, man. Yeah, and it's Chrissy, like, they're all like great people and just, you know, I'm never going to, I'm always going to stay in contact with those people just because, you know, I guess that's a good, that's a good measure of your culture. Mm -hmm. If you leave the, the, that job and you never talk to anybody that you worked with, probably didn't have a good <laughs> culture, but I still talk to a lot of people that I used to work with. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. That's it's a good sign. Sen- sensitive subject. Yeah. But and and me and Drex are me and Drex are friends. You know, I've never really hung oh, out yeah. with a lot of people, but now I'm yeah. like, you know, I, there was people where if I were to get married again. <laughs> I mean, I'm in love. I'm never going to get divorced. That's not what I meant. <laughs> when you renew your vows yes. with Krista, Drex will probably be one of your best men. <laughs> yes. How's that? I there we you. go. There you. we go. I got Appreciate you. it. Appreciate it. Krista. But, but yeah, we, we good. But no, nah, um, but yeah, I think it's something you, you did well, but like how, like if you can give us one tip that you focused on, uh, I, I mean, I know, you know, authenticity and vulnerability and just doing stuff like that, but was it something you were conscious of? Oh, building you have to be yeah you have or was to it be. pete batiste did he instill some of that in you early on or how was i that? mean that's that's back to episode one you know so yeah. i won't dig too deep into that yes yeah, yeah. it's by far something i've been taught by pete and keith hannawalt and gordy opitz and going back before them randy meese and i mean i could go on and on and on with the list of people face shaheen that that taught me how to do it and uh, i got a benefit from them building phenomenal cultures but it's also something yeah you have to pay attention to it yeah. you have to take active interest in your employees and especially now because we got those things and these things mm-hmm. and i mean you'll be sitting there and you'll find yourself completely disengaged i find it all the time you know who's the best at checking you with that who's that your kids oh yeah yeah your kids man it'll hit you like a ton of bricks like yeah. like home alone when kevin pops one of the burglars right in the eye with a brick you're like sitting there talking all of a sudden your kids will be like would you get off your phone and pay attention to me and you're like i'm sorry <laughs> yeah because the kids won't I hold failed back. you yeah like they don't care like they'll straight like no adult is usually gonna be like dude get off your phone and listen to me yeah, yeah, yeah. but a kid will yeah for sure so, so usually you know like you're like oh but i, I you know I, I was really bad about that and I think if you talk to certain people still, they would say I'm bad, but now I try to be cognizant of it, you know, but it's, this thing's a bad habit. You know, we talked about that on one of the episodes too, but yeah, you have to focus on it every day. I mean, sometimes you're in a hurry. You want to rush through that conversation, but you can't rush authenticity. You know what I mean? You can't rush building that culture. So to me, it's, it starts with having a leader who does have a genuine interest in employees, right? Yeah. Uh, who does have a general interest in their, their coworkers and, and that culture. Cause you ask those relevant questions, you know, what's going on with, I mean, how many times did I just stop at your house? Yeah. And I think like the rumor was early on, like, like, dude, you better be working. Yeah. Cause you never know when Steve's going <laughs> to pop so in afraid, at four you o'clock. Like, you like never did that though. You no. never were like, Hey, are you working? No, I used to just come walking in and grab a beer out of your <laughs> fridge at four o'clock. And that, that's how I roll. So, but, or I might like, you know, come over and clean your air conditioner. And make I fun might, of me for having one screwdriver. And make fun of you for having one screw. Yeah. <laughs> like, but, but that, I mean, it's reciprocal by the way too, because everybody knew my door was always open. How many times I had, you know, Drex or Jamal yeah. or any of you guys, you know, at my, at my house, roll in at five o'clock and start working from my, my bar, you know, or yeah. my, my table with my wife and kids cook a dinner, run around. Like, that's cool. Everybody yeah. knows that's fair game. Like I'm, and for people to say, well, that's family time and that's business time. Well, the, the business time is what helps to provide the really good family time, you know, like. And I think that, we touched on that. Like there really isn't a work life balance. Like it's I, not a, I don't know. I don't know how, you, how it's you, hard to describe man. <laughs> like, is. listen, like I'm not going to be like coaching my son on a Saturday morning. Like, Hey, yeah, man, go drive down. Hey, hey, what's up, bro? <laughs> hey, oh, you need help with this. Okay, cool. Like, Hey, can you coach my son? Like there's, there's dedicated times, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, like yeah. I'm not going to be like laying in bed, watching Yellowstone at night with my wife. Ooh, like, I'm, Ooh, I'm I got a phone episode. call, but you know, what I will do is be laying in bed at night watching Yellowstone and my phone rings and I can't answer it, but I'll grab it real quick and just shoot, you know, Percy a text like, Hey man, everything cool. Yeah. Just winding down for the night, you know? And if I get that text back, like, man, just really need to talk. Okay, cool. Now Yellowstone's going on pause, babe. Yeah. Sorry. Like this is a little more important, but yeah. if it's like, no, man, I was just checking in and, you know, talking about a couple of things that I'll catch up with you in the morning. People yeah. are usually pretty respectful of that, but I think just that availability of knowing like, Hey, I'm here. I mean, you and I had that conversation. I think you were afraid to have it whenever you started talking about rainbow. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think you were probably surprised with my reaction. I'm like, listen, man, like if this is what's like, I, I love you. You're going to be yeah. a part of my life going forward, no matter what. Right. Like we're, we're, we're good friends now. So you're in my circle and you got to do something really bad to get out of it. Right. <laughs> but, um, if this is something that makes you and your family better, if this makes you a better person and this is something that you need to, and then I get it. And I remember the last part of that conversation was if you ever, if you ever want to come back, yeah. come on back. Right. We'll yeah. So I think, I think it just boils that boils down to that, man. It's yeah. trust. I think people, you know, to me, a big part of culture is trust. If yeah. People can't trust you if they think that everything you're doing is, is means to an end. And I think that that does a lot to erode culture of an organization. Uh, if you try to fake it, I think people can see through that. It's like a dog can sense fear. I think employees know like right away, like, Oh, how awesome. You got me a fruitcake this year, Percy. How thoughtful. 
even though you know I'm allergic to fruit. <laughs> like, uh, that's not authentic yeah. culture, you know? Yeah. And that, man, that's just, see, that's, that's what I mean by having you on the show. I love having you here and just being able to say, hey, Steve, give you one word. And then just be, <laughs> <laughs> you're just able to go, Wah. because, you know, there are some times where I'm like, you know, huh, huh, you know, talk a little bit more, I guess. No. Oh, man. <laughs> It's a but problem. It's not, a problem. Hey, but on a I podcast, talk, it's not man, I'm passionate. <laughs> podcast is all talking. <laughs> so. I'm very, you know, I'm very passionate about pretty much everything I do. If, yeah. if I'm not passionate about, it, we won't talk about it. So yeah, I like that. Well, I know we, you hit on some things and there were some things that, you know, we, we talked about as well. And then we went on some things that I'm glad that you brought up. So, but before we go, I want to just for your, like yeah, we're doing good on time right now. We are, we are got another hour. <laughs> We'll have you back. No, yeah, yeah. this this podcast is going to go on forever. Yeah, uh, I, I always say that as well. But for for like in the future, you know, when you've made this change, like what are your goals? You know, now looking down the line for for Bonsky and Simpson, mm-hmm. and you know, just what do you see yourself? You know, re- I guess I don't want to say retiring because that's a long way. You know, you at least got thirty more years. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think retirement's probably something you'll hear out of Chad's mouth before you hear it out of mine, only because he has a 21 year head start on me in the industry, right? Yeah, like I'm yeah, far yeah. from being burnt out in the HVAC industry. I'm just starting to, you know, whet my appetite. So I'm learning every day. I'm excited. Growth is is the goal. So, you know, we are actively looking at other HVAC companies. You know, we're working with a couple right now that we could potentially acquire here in the near future. Um, so expansion, um, really providing exceptional customer service to every client. So training, we had a huge training this morning up in our uh, learning lab in Canton. We oh, have I, still five haven't, thousand I still haven't seen that yet. I gotta you gotta see there. it, man. Yeah. You gotta come up. It's unbelievable. No, no other company in, in Ohio has a facility like it. it's 5,000 square feet. We worked with manufacturers to, uh, to co-op it and put in functional equipment. So we have many splits, heat pumps, split systems. We have, you know, all this different equipment that we can train our guys on year round, so, I mean, we, we made some investments to really build it out to be a special company, but it goes back to um, the, the same thing we've been talking about. It's about culture, building this exceptional culture. You know, we offer career path planning to all of our service technicians, installers, our office staff, so that they can see right on paper exactly what the future holds for them. You know, it's not a, well, a person's my boy, so I'm going to pay him three bucks an hour more, even though he's not as qualified as you. It's, it's let's look at that job title. You know, you are a service technician too. These are the skills you're expected to have, and you make this much per hour. If you want to make this much, then you're expected to have these skills. Here's the tools to be able to get those skills. Here's a key to the learning lab. Here's an instructor. We're doing a course next Saturday. If you want to come up and attend it, we'll pay you your hourly rate to be there. Like those are the things we want to do to try to build a really strong team, right? We don't want people to leave the team. We want them to always, you know, we want to grow. You can't grow by letting people fly out the back door. You know, that's, that's part of what Comdoc's suffering from right now, unfortunately. Um, So we gotta, we gotta retain those really good people and we gotta invest in them and, and be willing to, you know, make their lives part of our lives. And I think that's something that Chad and I are both really good at. We're both really passionate about. So I don't know what the future holds. I don't know if it means, you know, grow it really, really big and sell it at some point. Cause there's already a lot of interest from private equity and other folks who are like, dang, you guys are doing something other people aren't doing. Like we're interested. So we've already had some conversations with some of those people, but you know, at this point, Chad and I continue to say like, we want to build something so special that other people want it, but we want to have so much fun doing it that we don't want to sell it. Yeah. So, and I think we're succeeding in that, you know, Bonsky's going to experience about 500% growth this year, which is absolutely all right. one year, one year, you know, <laughs> we didn't take right, over ownership to January 1st. So we'll take, but how did we do it? Incredible people. We went out and recruited and hired some of the best people there are in these jobs and roles, right? Um, Simpson's going to grow about 20% this year. And when I say Simpson, that's, that's, in, you know, incorporating some of those other companies that fall under there. Um, so I think it's just, uh, it's just, let's see what happens, man. Let's see where we're at. Um, energy wise in a couple of years, you know, we're both still pretty young. Chad's going to be 40 next year. Uh Oh, okay. yeah. So, uh, we gotta have him on here. He seems like a big talker. Oh man. <laughs> so he, yeah, he doesn't talk like I talk first of all, but he is a big talker. Yeah. If you get him on a topic he's passionate about, which is a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, then, then he'll talk all day, but I have to, I have to talk to him, reach out to him a little bit, see what's up. Oh yeah. He would love to do it though. Cause he, he, he loves doing stuff like this. So, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna have to get that. Cause I, I knew his, his younger brother, we, you know, we went to the, the, the most best elementary school in Dover there is for producing athletes, Dover South school. And, um, <clears throat> <laughs> I think good elementary. I don't have a dog. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're from Kentucky. So. Yeah, yeah. I went to, I think Cannonsburg Elementary <laughs> was the best elementary school for Cannonsburg. Google it. I will. I definitely will. <laughs> um, but 
you know, I, I, I want to, I want to reverse it, man. What's next for you? What's up? What's up for Percy Gardner next? I think people want to know, is it growing your podcast? Is it growing rainbow connection? What, what are you working on? Well, currently I am working, you know, with the, the SBDC to help. Cause I thought I knew everything there was to know about marketing and social media, but I don't, there's a lot <laughs> out there to learn, isn't there? <laughs> it's hard. And, uh, you know, luckily we have resources like the SBDC and I'm working with them on, you know, you know, marketing and social media stuff. What is that? Like small business development council yeah, yeah. Or committee or something? I think that's exactly what it is. Yeah. And you know, they got, they're a good resource for us. You know, rainbow connections, very small with me and Alexis. So we got a lot to learn and it's, it's good to have someone like her who Alexis is an employee. It's not Percy in a Lexus for the record. Yeah. Said with me and Alexis, like <laughs> I don't want people thinking Percy's cruising around in his Lexus collected donations for the <laughs> rainbow connection. It's him yeah, and no. Alexis. No, I employee. sold my, my Lexus in 2015. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yes, two, two employees at the rainbow connection. And obviously our board's great. And, you know, I'm just, you know, looking this as a, a step to, you know, learn how to build up an organization. And thankfully, uh, Carmel done a great job with rainbow connection that all I'm really doing is just, you know, changing the technology and, you know, changing, you know, a couple things and, and trying to, you know, keep the boat going and, yeah. you know, build on what she's already built over the last 22 years. So sure. And haven't messed it up. Yes. We're going strong. And, uh, you know, we got the telethon coming up that you're going to be a host on <clears throat> MC and, uh, Love it. I'm in, man, you know that <laughs> awesome. But yeah, I just want to grow as a, you know, cause obviously I've always been an employee and, I, you kind of can get comfortable. A lot of Americans are comfortable just being an employee, but Amen. I wanted to get out of my comfort zone just like you. And, you know, I wanted to learn how to big, build an organization. And, uh, you know, I'm still in that learning process, but I also gave me the freedom to do creative content just like this. And, you know, with COVID and stuff like that, I haven't been, I could feel like I could have made more content, but hey, we're learning and, you know, Josh has, has to kick me in the butt a few times. That's but, okay. Yeah. But I, I want to make content. I want to make more because I love doing this too, but I kind of want to, you know, dive even deeper with people and talk about subjects that aren't, you know, easy to talk about. So, you know, and that'll be at a different set, a different look. Eventually we've been playing this for months, but mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. stuff's getting slowed down, but it's all good. People get sick and it's hard to met, you know, get people scheduled together. So I'm excited for it. I don't know, you know, I'm also scared because talking about stuff that's hard to talk about is, is scary, it's but we'll crazy. get through it. <laughs> He's just crazy. Be, being vulnerable is hard, man. I, it is. I, I, I'm not good at it yet. I'm still not. There, well, that's I, the ego you admitted to earlier. It's the ego. Yeah. It's the, it's the, it's sometimes what could be perceived as arrogance. Yeah. I don't like to think of myself as an arrogant person. I know I do carry myself in an arrogant manner sometimes, but I, mean, I think people mistake your arrogance for competitiveness. Oh, I'm a absolute, I, I, I posted that question on Facebook a couple weeks ago because it was, it was a topic that morning. And I said, you know, what, what drives you more? The, the, the hate of loss or the, the thrill of win. And, you know, I worded it a different way than that. And it was interesting to see that, like, but for me, it's never been a question. Yeah. I hate to lose. Yeah. I hate to lose. The wins are so fleeting, you know, yeah. you win and you move on. And I, I'll remember a win for 10 seconds. Yeah, true. I remember all the losses. And then I'm not talking about sports losses. I could care less if I lost yeah. a basketball game when I was a sophomore in high school. I'm talking about the more. Oh, I still remember losses. my senior year losing student bill, but what? Oh yeah. I remember <laughs> not making the playoffs as a senior at Dover football. But no, I, I know mean, what you mean. I know what you mean. Those the losses in life. That's where my ego comes out in sports. I have a little bit, you know, obviously everyone who plays sports at a high level, you have oh, some man. ego. You hide your ego. Well, I I'm do. Never, yeah. <laughs> but in like normal life, that's where I'm kind of like, you know, I struggle, you know, I, obviously I've been brought up as a Christian man, which me and Kyle Tharp talked about a little bit. And your dad was very humble. Yes. He was a very, he had a lot of humility. He so. did. He did. And he instilled that in me, but also I've just been in, in the culture we live in the society, you know, men, you're just taught to be, you know, Hey, you gotta be, be strong first. Yes. You gotta be yeah. quiet, but also keep it uh, all in. Yeah. Keep it all in, be mm -hmm. strong. Mm -hmm. But at the same time you have to be, you know, kind and you can't, use your 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 masculinity to you know go after things you want i mean you people do like you've been successful but you know it's kind of yeah as the world's going on you know it's kind of like oh you know be a nice guy you know be a nice guy yeah what's i, th I forget exactly what the old saying is but it's like you'll get more flies with honey than vinegar right yeah so uh, I, I think there's some truth to that and i think 
long term, you have to think about legacy when it comes to that conversation. You might get the same or more by being the jerk, yeah. by being the <laughs> hostile takeover. You know, I'm going to Richard Gear and pretty woman you every time we meet. I'm just going <laughs> to come in and take it. But what's the legacy going to be? And I think that's, you know, a, a great answer when you say, what's your why? You know, we talked about that earlier. I think legacy is a great answer. You know, when you ask people, what's, what's your why? Well, legacy, we'll dig a little deeper. Tell me more. Well, I know people who, you know, when people talk to talk about them when they're not around, that it, they don't say nice things. You know, everybody wants to be nice to them to their face because they, yeah. they're afraid of them or they're this big respect. You. But when all of a sudden that person's not around, it's not the kindest thing they say. So wanting to have a legacy of, you know, hey, they were a great person. They did good things. They made the community a better place. I think that's a, a great why for a lot like of people. Like Ron Whetstone. Oh, man, what a, yeah. what an incredible guy, right? So. Yeah. And I hate to keep pulling on people's heart strings with the Ron Weststone, but I just, he's a, he was, he, I mean, the time he gave to a program yeah. was, you know, and he didn't get a paid a dollar to do it. Just a phenomenal, phenomenal guy that the, the basketball community locally, especially is going to oh miss my. tremendously. I know coach Von Kennel can't even, you know, yeah. mention oh. his name without getting choked up because yeah. he meant so much to him. And I mean, that's what it's all about, man. It's about relationships. And, you know, I'm impressed when you just now said you're, you're, you know, you don't want to ever get comfortable. You're, you, you want to get comfortable being uncomfortable, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's how we improve. I really believe that. Like, but it's hard though. Being comfortable is, is nice. <laughs> oh man. I but tell you it, what, it goes to my, my faith though. That's what, you know, idle hands of the devil's about. workshop, yes. right? Idle hands of the devil's workshop or, yeah. you know, a rolling stone gathers no moss. I mean, whatever you want to say, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, if you're not pushing yourself and challenge, there's one area I struggle in it, a vulnerability. Mm hmm fitness that's always been but you have already you were already vulnerable on this episode so you, you've already oh. taken steps talking about you know you brought it out you, you I, I have an ego you know oh yeah no no it's something that yeah if you'd <laughs> ask 25 year olds they'd be like yeah dude but it ain't a problem you know <laughs> no it's a, it's it's a little bit different but i think uh, i think yeah. as i've gotten older too that ego's probably faded a little bit and i realize like it's not quite as important as yeah. uh, as it used to be but still there still yeah. still peeks its <laughs> ugly little head up from time to time and it's usually in like that moment of uh emotion or yeah. like you know passion when something happens uh, yeah like youth sports could be a really bad spot for me sometimes where, Ooh, i want to see steven oh, in action i hate it though man <laughs> do you, have you ever had that moment where like you do it it doesn't feel nearly as good as you thought yeah. it would and then you regret it for like the next week oh yeah for sure for yeah sure. so that's me and youth sports sometimes like you know <laughs> Swing the bat, Gavin. What are you doing? like? Take his joy for the game. Steal yeah. that from him, you know? Because yeah, yeah the, I'm I'm a tough guy. I'm gonna steal that joy from you, you ten year old little baseball player. Like, <laughs> and then you go home and you think of it that way. Is he's like, Daddy, can I have my teddy bear, please? And then you're like, I'm a jerk. Like I just I'm a terrible human being. Absolutely terrible human being. Terrible father. Well, I'll never recover from this. You know. <laughs> So, but, oh, but the, the learning lesson is the next time, like fighting it harder and harder and harder. Yeah. So I think I've become a little bit better at that. So far we've had a great basketball season. I haven't lost my cool once. So that's yeah, wait, good. Do we play you coming up? Um, are we talking two, three here? Like second, third graders? Yeah. I, yeah. You'll never see me lose my cool in those <laughs> games. That's like, Dang. yeah, those games are just, uh, I know. wanted to see you run on a court and block my son's shot. Those, those are about <laughs> develop. I saw that the other day. Did you see that clip? No. <laughs> The guy's son was about to score in the wrong hoop and he used bat the dad ran out and spiked the ball before he could shoot into the wrong hoop. I'm gonna have to watch that. Oh, I'm gonna have to watch that. We're getting a little long, aren't we? Yeah, we are. We gotta we gotta wrap it up. And just my you know, sister in law is like, Hey, I got the kids, come on now. So Yeah, yep, for sure. But uh again, we'll be back. Man. We'll do it again, man. Yeah, of course, of course. Love having you on here. We gotta get Chad on here as well, man. Of course, you're always welcome on the show. You provide so much <laughs> energy and so much insight. Love having you here. And uh yeah, man, you know, we'll We'll see you back here. And obviously I got to come to the the place up in Canton, the the nice facility at the 5,000 square foot facility. You got to check gotta, it out. Got to check it out. And then yeah. I also got to check out the, the uh, warehouse, the warehouse. Yes, absolutely. So. Maybe next time we flip the script. I kind of like the idea of me interviewing you. Ooh, okay. Has that anybody done a straight Percy interview from sort of episode one, but I really didn't let Josh, was it you, Josh? I really didn't let you talk. I just kind of went on a tangent. I, I'd like to peel back some layers of that onion a little bit. All right, let's do it. I think we do it with no script, no preparation. You come just in. I think in. that's how we're going to get the most authentic answers. All right. I'm good with that. All right. Coming soon. <laughs> 99 miles per hour. <laughs> with Steve Van Horn. <laughs> with Steve Van Horn. With my guest, Percy Gardner. Thanks, Subway. <laughs> your sponsorship appreciate that <laughs> and on that note peace you my
I got a crib out of water. Save me casa, su casa. 